Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Um, my name is Max, and I'm an alcoholic, and it's great to be here with everybody on a Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning, wherever you are in the world. Um, and I want to thank um, the group for asking me to speak here um, and to Young for uh, <laughs> helping me get here. Um, I am, um, for some reason, um, exceptionally nervous about doing this today. And um, I don't know what that is, but by the grace of God, this journey of recovery that I'm on, I know that at some point um, I will understand where that fear is coming from and what I have to do with the grace of God to have it removed. Um, So um, it took me some time to select that reading um, because when I opened that little book, <laughs> there was so much stuff inside there that um, I didn't quite fully relate to or fully understand. Um, maybe that's because of the transition that I'm in at this moment in my spiritual journey and my spiritual growth. And that's what the power of God is all about. Um, so in... Um, a little bit of consultation and back and forward with Young, he directed me to the only place that I know best, and that is the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, where my foundations have been set so firmly that I know that I can't deviate from the 164 pages that were written by the first 100. And that has been the lifeline that has enabled me to grow in understanding and effectiveness in how I live my life and how I continue to mine for this gold that is the relationship with this power greater than myself. And my friend Young reminded me of a recording that I'd listened to some time ago when I was drunk. Joe and Charlie talking about step six and seven and how mining for gold was mining for our innermost self. And when I take away the worldly clamors and the material things and individuals in my life that have affected me or who I believe have affected me, um, which they haven't because I have the ability and the opportunity to see things from an entirely different angle now because Alcoholics Anonymous and going on the journey of the 12 steps to have the most beautiful, unbelievable spiritual awakening as the results of the steps, I can see what is the key to my future. On page 66, it talks about It holds the key to our future. And by simply following the clear cut directions that are set out in this big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, to which our fellowship is named after, I've been able to sweep away my prejudice. I've been able to think honestly, and I've been able to search diligently for the faults in my makeup. And I can no longer be the victim of what I believe has been done to me or what has happened to me because I'm no longer the victim. I stand strong in a relationship with a part greater than myself that has become the most important relationship in my entire life. And without that, I can't search for the gold. It's as simple as that. Without that, I can't get this life. 
that has been given to me, which is better than gold. It's better than any material possession that I could ever strive to have. It's better than any human relationship that I could strive to have. It's as simple as that. As long as I follow these clear cut directions and mind them for the rest of my life. And in the last few weeks, I can only talk about my experience and where I'm at right now. Um, in the last couple of months, even the last few weeks, things have been hitting me like, like what feels like the speed of light. So fast, so hard, so... Um, Yeah, it's just happened so fast. I didn't think that so much could happen in recovery so quickly when it took me so long to find this solution. But that's the power and the pace at which God wants me to live and learn and grow. And that's the part that I have to um, work through every day and keep on mining and keep on doing what's suggested so that I no longer build up these blocks between you and I that I continue to mine, to, to pull back the tissues in, our, in my own makeup. Because for too long, I've compacted things when I was in the grips of this illness. You know, this day, three years ago, this day, three years ago, I was in the grips of this illness. This day, three years ago, I was crying out for help, but I couldn't stop drinking. I was drinking against my will. I just couldn't stop. And I was continuing to create this person, my ego creating this layers and layers of tissues in my makeup of what I thought I had to be, who I thought I had to be for you, who I thought I had to be for me. <laughs> wanting to strive for perfection and I don't even know what perfection is but striving for it all the same searching, searching, searching running, grasping, grasping grasping, yet all the while I was in the grip of this progressive illness that was only going to take me to death <laughs> and ultimately that's where I nearly ended up um, and as um, a result of the great persuader as they talk about on page 48 and I'll always refer back to the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous because more often than not I can't articulate myself what has happened and the first 100 do such an amazing job of translating what their experience was that they, they took the time to write it into a book so that the message wasn't lost and when I'm in meetings like this, I try my very best to stick to the truth of the first 100 men and women and not give my opinion and not give my judgment because doing things the way that I would do it would not be good for anyone. So I will always refer to the pages of the book. Um, some people don't like me doing that. They think that I'm a bit, well, I don't know what they think. It doesn't really matter. I don't really care anymore. Um, but all I can do is um, direct the newcomer um, to the part of the book that I'm talking about or to anybody in the room to the part of the book that I'm talking about in order for you to kind of search yourself and find the little gems that are in there because they are gems. We can mine for diamonds in, the, in this book because every single time I sit with another alcoholic, I find another perfect, precious gem that gives me the ability to see things from an entirely different angle. Um... Anyway, I don't know whether any of that made much sense, but um, I don't even know where I was going with that. Anyway, I use the words from the book because it gives us the clear cut directions. And yeah, it wasn't that long ago that, that I was in the grips of this illness. But the reality of it is I know that I'm never cured. I know that I have a daily reprieve contingent on my spiritual condition. And that takes work. That takes effort. It tells us in Bill's story on page 14. It's simple, but not easy. And I don't find this easy. 
I was with um, a sponsee the other day and the next line on page 14 says, it meant the destruction of self-centeredness. We must turn all things over to the Father of Light. I had seen the word simple and easy, but not easy. I love the line, we had to turn things over into the, to the Father of Light. I love that phrase for God, that pronoun for God, Father of Light, I love that. But for some reason the other day, that sentence, it meant the destruction of self-centeredness hit me round the face like a tree trunk. It meant the destruction of self-centeredness because therein lies my problem. I also know that on page 62, it talks about selfishness, self-centeredness. That's the root of our problems. Yeah, selfishness, self-centeredness. That's the root of my problem. I'd missed the point in Bill's story. It meant the destruction of self-centeredness. That's a completely different angle. And in order to destruct that, I have no power. I have no power to do that, to change. So I, have, I haven't got the power to, to, of myself to cut that tree trunk in half and destruct it. I haven't got the power, lack of power that is my dilemma. And where am I to find that power? Well, that's exactly the purpose of this book. So if there's anybody in this room who's sitting here thinking, they can do it their way, they can do it without a sponsor, they can do it without the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, that they can do it without the 12 steps, they can do it without having a spiritual awakening. The reality of it is you can't. You just can't. If you do the work, it'll happen. If you don't do the work, it won't. And I know that from bitter experience. I went on to the bitter end, blotting out the consciousness of this absolutely intolerable situation and way of living to the point of nearly taking me to death. At which point I had no other option than to accept the spiritual help. I had no other option. And thank God, alcohol, that great persuader, that's the point from page 48, the great persuader beat me into a sense of reasonableness where I have now been brought into a way of living. I've been brought into this way of living that is infinitely more wonderful as time passes. And that's my experience in the last two and a half years. Infinitely more wonderful as time passes. And if I do the work and I continue to mine, it will only get better and better and better and better. But the things that I've been going through in the last couple of months, the last couple of weeks, I can't allow myself to make you wrong. I can't allow myself to be drawn into this control tower that is my head that wants to prove that you're wrong and I'm right. That dualistic thinking. I can't make you wrong anymore. I can't be the victim anymore because I have this power greater than myself in my life that wants me to continue to search diligently and sweep aside everything that I think I know in order to have a new experience with him. And I call him and my God him because it's easier to set aside everything I think I know, to have a new experience with him every single time and every single interaction no matter how right I think I am I can't make you wrong and it's only in doing that that I become able to grow more and that my roots continue to grasp a new soil that my roots get deeper and deeper and deeper and no matter what negativity or issue or controversy or whatever it is comes my way that cornerstone is so firmly in place that nothing will shake me. Nothing will shake me. 
but I only have that power and strength and direction in love because I continue to do what is suggested. It's dead simple, but it's not easy. And there's so many little things that I've written down and I'm probably not going to cover them in the in the short time. But, you know, the, the extract that is taken from as Bill sees it is actually um, from page 120 to 129 in the family afterwards. And the newcomer that they're referring to is actually the father in the family afterwards who has found this new way of living, this spiritual intoxication. You know, that moment when we first get sober and we think everything is just so wonderful and everything's just wonderful and there's never going to be anything that goes wrong in our lives ever again. This father, me, <laughs> the newcomer. Just so thrilled not to be having the hangovers, just so thrilled and the miracle of it, the miracle that I don't have to have a drink. The miracle that I recoil from it like a hot flame, no matter what. I was standing at work last Friday and there was so much going on, so much going on. And the thought came into my head from Bill's story. Do you know what will fix this? Gin will fix it. Gin. Gin will fix this. And then I felt the presence of God where I feel God in my body. And I knew that gin wouldn't fix it. Gin will fix it. My automatic default position, I'm an alcoholic. That sense of ease and comfort that comes when we first have that first drink, those that we can see people to others taking with impunity. That sense of ease and comfort came from simply saying, God, stick with me. Stick with me, because it's not these people's fault. It's not the women's fault that I work with. What's going on inside me? What are you showing me? What do I have to mine for? What do I have to dig for? What are you showing me? Because in digging and searching, I find, I find it. I find out what, this, what the answer is. I find out what the solution is. The tissue in my makeup. You know, I put makeup on every day to cover up the imperfections that are me. I've made this person up that everybody sees here. My ego wants, wants me to be perfect in presenting to you what my experience is of Alcoholics Anonymous. God just wants me to tell the truth. <laughs> and on this journey, you know, it tells us, Dr. Silkworth talks about we must have this power in our lives and it's your case power at that time it's the strength we must have this power in our lives if we are to recreate our lives if we are to recreate our lives every day I recreate my life because I go to bed do that inventory ask for the corrective measures wake up the next day on awakening what have you got in store for me today God end of the day I go out of my head and into my heart because God has absolutely 100% entered into my heart in a way that is miraculous that I can't describe. And that's why I use the words from the big book. That is my experience out of my head and into my heart. Because when I think from my heart and talk from my heart, it takes every prejudice, every need to be right away. Because there is no wrong, my sponsor, Gosh, I'm so blessed to have the sponsor that I have and continue to work with them. Because he tells me the truth. He takes no BS. He puts me straight right back into the pages. Doesn't give me an opinion. Doesn't tell me what to do. Straight into the pages. Straight into God. Out of my head and into my heart. It's that simple. <laughs> But it's not easy because I still want to run the show. I want to be the actress. I want to be doing all of the stuff that needs to happen to put on this show. But by mining for the gold, ripping back those tissues in my makeup, I'm made bare. 
and exposed to the true reality of what my defects were because I don't have the defects that I first had when I came in what's happening is my little ego this little girl is just recreating every single day <laughs> but as I keep on stripping back and keep on you know revealing these layers and getting truly honest with myself I'm able to to do what God wants me to do. I, when I sincerely took that position, and I've made that decision again, to hand my will and my life over to the care of God as I understood him. Because I can't look after myself. I can't protect myself. I can't keep myself safe. I can't. I walk into situations which I allow myself to be harmed because I think I know better. Or I'm trusting that you have changed too. I'm trusting your motives. I'm trusting what you're doing because God teaches me to trust people. But I have to stay true to myself. I have to stay true to my innermost self. I can't mine for you and take your inventory. I have to mine for myself and take my own because it's only by searching in my own inventory that I find out the reality of who I am and what God wants me to be. The first time I went through the steps was but the beginning. We've just scratched the surface, scratched the surface. And when I got down into the causes and the conditions of what was going on deep down inside me, what a revelation. Revolutionary is what they talk about in Bill's story revolutionary and drastic proposals but the moment I fully accepted them everything changed and, you know on the 29th of November 2019 I ultimately ended up having to be locked away from the world for three and a half months because I couldn't stop drinking I, I just couldn't I had to be removed from the world in order for alcohol to be removed from me and within the three and a half months that I was in that place I distinctly remember the night where I asked God to remove my alcoholism and in that prayer I asked him to remove it and I told him that I would do for him what he needed me to do for the rest of my life and the next morning I woke up everything was different I said that prayer at 20 minutes to nine on the Wednesday evening and on the Thursday morning I woke up everything was different and from that moment I have been catapulted into a way of life that is indescribably wonderful. I've been on this trajectory where I have not stopped. And it's not of me. It's genuinely not of me. I haven't got the power to do what I'm doing in my life at this moment in time, other than it's been given to me by this power greater than myself who has literally just taken over my life. It's been given to me. It's been brought, I've been brought into this life because I asked for it. I made the decision that my way wasn't working. I made the decision that this is it. And I was fearless. I was thorough in four. I admitted in five. I asked God to take all of me good and bad. And I've done it again recently, take all of me. Because I can't cope in this life. I can't live in this life of myself. But, you know, that little, I, I quote this all the time, page 132, 16 lines from the top, 16 lines from the bottom, two words in from the left, two words in from the right. We absolutely insist in enjoying life. Center of the page, center of my life. I absolutely insist in enjoying life. Because for the first couple of years, I was dependent on the book. For the first couple of years, I was dependent on sponsorship. For the first couple of years, I was dependent on meetings. Uh, for the first couple of years, I've been dependent on human power. And it doesn't work. It's not my sponsor that does this for me. He does it with me. It's not the meetings that do this for me. I never need to go to a meeting. 
I never need to go to a meeting. I go to a meeting because I'm there to carry the solution, the message to the still suffering alcoholic who needs this solution so that they can have a a way of living that is infinitely more wonderful as time passes. I don't go to a meeting to dump my problems. I don't go to a meeting to tell you what is wrong in my life. I go to the meetings to say, everything's brilliant. Everything's okay. Because if you work this, if you work this, God could and would if he were sought. You know, I have to take that certain simple attitude every day. Every single day I have to take that attitude. Because if I don't, you know, the, the attitude is the direction of travel, that line of sight. If I don't have this certain simple attitude every single day, I end up in a different direction. And it's, 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 it's just not worth it. You know, the, a defect of character is a lack of something. The lack of power. I need to add in that power in order to be able to live the way that God wants me to live. Somebody said to me over the course of the last couple of weeks, God won't give you, God won't give you, you know, too much to handle. God never gives you more than you can handle. Mm, Really? Because the amount of stuff that I have had to handle over the last few weeks is more than I can handle of myself. But with God, anything is possible. Anything is possible. And whilst I'm waiting on finding out what the answer is and what the solution is to all of these little problems that I have, I don't have any problems. God solved all my problems. Because whilst I'm sitting here with you, all of those little problems are way over there. And whilst I'm waiting on whatever it is that God's trying to show me, he's working. The tissues in my makeup are being stripped back. I don't know why. (laughs) But he will show me when he's ready. He's teaching me more. He's revealing more. And it's only through this program that I have been able to find out who I truly am and to be able to stay true to myself and to continue to mine. Because no human power will be able to affect me whilst I have this power greater than myself working in and through me. And what I have to do for the rest of my life is 10, 11, and 12. Continue to watch, ask, turn. Watch for these things that I find in my inventory. Ask God to remove these things and resolutely turn my thoughts to help other people because on page 20 it tells us as an ex-problem drinker, my very life depends on the constant thought of others. My very life. And then 11, I seek through prayer and meditation only for his will, only for his will and the power to carry that out. And in step 12, I carry this message and I try my very best to practice these principles in every single one of my affairs. And in doing so, in doing so, I learn so much more. In doing so, I'm immune from alcohol. In doing so, I, yes, we stand shoulder to shoulder, spreading and carrying this message to ensure permanent recovery across the world. It's not just about my own recovery. It's about helping these other women and men to find this way of living that that they're searching for. And then step 12, and all of those daily reprieve steps, 10, 11, and 12, They're all about me fitting myself to be of maximum service to God, not the other way around. God, you fit, continue to fit to me. No, I'm bent out of shape every day to get the destruction of the self-centeredness. I'm bent out of shape every day to do his will. You know, I don't want to be here on a Sunday at one o'clock, but it's what I have to do. Of course, I want to be here with all my friends. There's nothing better than being here. But, you know, of myself, I don't really want to be here sitting here nervous and afraid and showing you that I'm not great at all of this stuff. But here I am. 
And I don't know whether I've carried any sort of message today, but you know, that's what has come and in search and diligently and setting aside everything I think I know about myself and about you. Somehow the walls inside me come down. And I, you know, there's times in my life where I can't see people, I can't hear people because I'm building up the barrier that I think is protecting me to keep me safe. But in actual fact, we're Alcoholics Anonymous and this power that's been given to me, the walls come down. I can see you. I can hear you. I can try and help you. Um, and in helping others, it's a constant love and tolerance is our code. You know, uh, we, we use an international dialing code to call our friends in other parts of the world. But well, my international dialing code to God is love and tolerance is my code because whilst I'm dialing into God using that code, I'm always connected. I'm always connected. So I'm going to keep on mining for the gold. <laughs> I'm going to keep on mining for my innermost self because that way I don't squander away the hours with resentment, guilt, shame or remorse. I become more useful. I'm going to mine more because I don't need to impress you anymore. I just need to show up. I just need to be involved. And being involved in this amazing fellowship of the spirit everything's okay. So I'll leave it at that. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.